Hi, it's been a while since I made my last video and today we are going to talk about configuration properties. Configuration properties is the feature from Spring Boot that everyone uses since its first release version. So I'm not going to really talk about like the very basic stuff, what it is and what is it for, but rather what can you do with it? There are a couple of interesting things that you can uh, do with configuration properties and in particular we are going to talk about how to uh, validate configuration properties, how to set it up properly, how to get a very nice auto completion in IDE like you have for the built-in configuration properties from Spring Boot and how does it actually work and also at the last we will talk about how can you reuse the same configuration properties class multiple times. Okay, so we start with an empty Spring Boot project. There are no extra dependencies. There is just a Spring Boot starter and Spring Boot starter test for test dependencies. And now I would like to have a properties in my application properties where I can specify some imaginary host and port, let's say. So let's call it my properties host and this can be localhost and my properties port. The way to map it to a class is obviously first we have to create a new class and I will call it my properties and create these two properties. So it will be string for host, int for port. This is, I guess, quite obvious. So then we need to annotate this class and configuration properties. And as the value, we put the prefix uh, that we specified over here. So now in this case, it will be my properties. IntelliJ already tells us that this class is not registered. So Spring will not actually pick it up on the application context startup. The way to register it is to add at enable configuration properties, where we specify which class we want to enable. And just to keep in mind, this enable configuration properties can be added actually anywhere. It can be either a configuration class, it can be the main class of the application. It can be also any spring being annotated with a service, for example. One thing that you may find interesting, this line will not be needed starting from Spring Boot 2.2. So starting from Spring Boot 2.2, all configuration properties classes will be out of scan. But for now, we have to keep it here. Okay, so now if we go to back to the class, Spring is not complaining, sorry, IntelliJ is not complaining anymore that this configuration class is not found. And if we want to actually bind the properties we specified over here to this class, this class needs to have getters and setters. That's unfortunately the requirement at this stage. As far as I remember, starting, starting from Spring Boot 2.2, we would be able to make the configuration properties classes immutable. So we could define all the properties as final and just provide the one constructor and getters. At this stage, that's the, that's the current state. This has to have a getters and setters. If you are not a fan of this type of boilerplate, and definitely I'm not a fan of it, uh, I would recommend adding Lombok to the dependency so we can just get rid of all of these getters and setters. So if we add a Lombok dependency, we don't need to specify the version because Spring Boot knows which version of Lombok to pick up and we make it an optional dependency. So now instead of having all these getters and setters, I can get rid of them. We can just annotate this class with a data annotation from Lombok. So let's now verify if it actually works. And uh, like the, the easiest way just to is to create a application runner bin that will print out the content of the uh, application properties on, a, on context startup. Okay, so the properties are set properly What's next? It's often a very good idea to validate 
these configuration properties in a way that when application starts, we can be sure that everything that is expected to be set is set and also with the correct values. So the way to do it is to add validation annotations on these properties over here. And these annotations come from uh, JSR 303. And you can put like not null or not blank, but as you can see, they are not yet in the class path. If you have Spring Boot Starter Web on your class path, there is a likelihood that you have these dependency already there. In this case, what I need to add is Spring Boot Starter validation. And Spring Boot Starter validation brings a couple of dependencies that I can see here in the Maven panel in IntelliJ. It comes with the Hibernate validator and Hibernate validator also brings the package with all the annotations. So if you are not sure if you can already use it or not, you can just search for Spring Boot Starter validation in, in your Maven dependencies. Or if you are not using IntelliJ, I'm not sure if it's, if you can also do the same with Eclipse or NetBeast, but you can always use Maven dependency tree and grep by uh, validation. The next step would be to get rid of this error message or rather a warning message that the Spring Boot configuration annotation processor is not found in the class path. We don't actually need to care about it because as we could see, everything works as expected. But if I go to the application properties, these properties are highlight highlighted and it says that it cannot resolve the configuration property. So basically IDE is not aware of my properties configuration. And Spring comes with a very easy way to tell the IDE about our configuration properties in a way that we can get auto completion in the same manner as we get it for built in Spring Boot properties. Let's go back to POMXML and add a dependency to Spring Boot configuration processor. And this is also optional so that now if I recompile the project with Maven, it will create a new directory in target classes called metainf. And this directory contains a JSON file that describes all of our configuration properties. So now if I go back to application XML, these fields are not highlighted anymore. And if I hit control space, it auto completes the, the possible properties. What is even cooler, if I add here a Java doc, like this is my host name, and I recompile this class again, this Java doc should also appear in the JSON file that will give me a very nice hint message whenever I try to autocomplete it. So let's say I put here and here's where it pops up my host name. And the last thing that I would like to show is how to reuse existing configuration properties classes if you need to use them, for example, twice. So let's say that I want to define this my properties, but I also want to define some another properties. And this is basically the same properties. I also want to specify host and the port, and I wouldn't like to create another class that will be just called some properties with exactly the same content. So this can be done by getting rid of this configuration properties annotation from here and instead adding it as a bean. So we can create a bean of type my properties. We can call it my properties just to return new instance without setting anything. And this annotations instead goes over here. So we will call it here my properties. And we duplicate it for some properties. Something to keep in mind, if we want to get these, this JSON with the documentation and auto completion generated, these two beans have to be public. Otherwise, they will be skipped. Not sure exactly why. And what more, we need to get rid of this enable configuration properties because we define this configuration properties already as a beans, so there's no need to declare it again. So let's now change it that it's not just a single my properties instance, but rather a list. And let's put these properties 
in a way that it passes the validation and see if it works. Okay, so this worked well. Now we lost the auto completion here, but I would imagine that if I rebuild the project, let's say the recompile it with Maven, the JSON file should come back. Yes, yeah, so the JSON file now contains properties for both my properties and some properties. IntelliJ unfortunately still doesn't understand this, but at least we get the auto completion right. Okay, this will be it for today. If you like the video, don't forget to give it a like and hopefully see you in the next video.